All right, so we're still in uh, introduction to part design. Uh, we just finished extrude. Now we're gonna do revolve, but before you do that, watch uh, two videos, two interesting video. One is part studio view options, how to manipulate the object in this in the part window, and then uh, appearance and material, how to change colors, how to change the material, and then now go to the exercise. So let's hide this. Let's reduce this in size. And let's create a new document. And let's name this exercise revolve. Okay. All right. So, so it says, uh, practice creating a fully defined sketch and use the revolve feature to create a part. So click next. So first slide, create a new document and be sure workspace length is inches and then begin a sketch on the right plane. So this is the right plane. So you click on it and then you start a sketch. So you can also click a, create a sketch and then click on the plane. Okay, so it says here right plane. And then instead of right clicking and then clicking view normal two, press the letter N. Okay, and then instead of right clicking and then um, hiding all planes, click the letter P. So the N and the P for the key, those are the keyboard shortcuts. And then hit next, um, sketch a vertical line whose bottom end point is coincident to the origin and sketch a horizontal construction line whose midpoint is aligned to the origin. So click on construction and click on the line and draw a line straight up. And it's a construction line, okay? So again, do the same thing and do a horizontal line. I'm going to make this a little bit longer so that you could see the difference. So next, um, this vertical line and this point, they're supposed to be coincident. And then this horizontal line and the point, we have to use midpoint. So where's midpoint? Midpoint right there. Okay. Next. Click on the next slide. And then it says here, using the line tool, sketch the lines as shown. Be sure that the two indicated lines are not horizontal. These aren't horizontal. And the midpoint constraint between the top horizontal line and the end point. Okay, so let's try to draw that. So here's the line. So click. So I just need the shape. So I'm not being um, care careful with the drawing. Just trying to follow what they said that I have to do. Okay, there you go. Um, this and that point right there, use midpoint. And then these two aren't horizontal. And then it also says here, be sure to include necessary sketch constraint like horizontal and vertical. So if I click on show constraints, this one is horizontal already. This same is horizontal. Okay. These are vertical, 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 vertical. This one is, this one right here doesn't say it's vertical, just to be sure. Let's click on vertical. And then this one doesn't say it's horizontal, just to be sure. Horizontal. So there you go. Okay. So let's hide those. Let's go to the next slide. All right, it says here, add an equal constraint to each pair shown. So this and this should be of equal length. And then this, and then this one should be of equal length also. These two lines should be of equal length as well. These two diagonals should be of equal length as well. And then this two, it equal. Okay, so 
Let's go to the next slide. All right, um, using the dimension tool, add the shown dimension. So this one should be 1.625, 1 1.625, 1 okay. And then inside one should be 1.5, okay. Let's move these down, the space in between this two is 0.25 and then the angle for this line and this one is 3 degrees and as you can see it made the adjustment here also because they're equal. Okay, so hit next. All right, using the dimension tool, add the four diameter dimensions shown. So this one is something different, something that we haven't uh, done with um, Autodesk Inventor. So pay close attention to this one. So the instruction goes like this. So you're gonna use the dimension tool as usual. Click on the line. So click on this line. And click on the construction line click on the construction line and then move past the construction line and then you'll see that the dimension becomes a um, diameter so click on it and then type the first one is 0.5 okay next this next line and click on the construction line but go past beyond it and then it becomes a uh, diameter and then that's one okay let's move this up here so it's not confusing so it should be like that all right the next one click on this point to the construction line and then go move past that and then type 2.75, 2.75. Okay, the next one is click here into the construction line and then move past it and then type three inches. Okay, there you go. It's fully constrained now. It's all, the lines are all in black. So click check, click next slide and then select the revolve feature says here okay and then accept the feature so let's click here and then say isometric and then let's go click on the feature click on the drawing i meant and then click on the revolve feature so i've selected the sketch already so now i click on revolve axis and i click on the revolve axis and then it makes that wheel Okay, let's see, accept the feature, so click check, hit next, and then says here, rename, instead of part one, we'll name it as wheel, so go here, right click, rename, type wheel, enter, hit next slide, to edit the appearance, right click on the wheel in the parts list, and select edit appearance, so right click, edit appearance, and then it says here change the appearance to any color so choose any color that you like so let me choose this color click apply the change hit next slide and then it says uh, right click on the wheel in the parts list and select assign material so again right click assign material and then um, where it says on shape material library under it is none you're gonna have to search for for cast iron so just type cast iron okay and check so this one now uh, the material for this piece is cast iron so now if we select the wheel again here 
and click on the mass properties down here we will be able to see the mass of this part how heavy this part is going to be in pounds okay and so what you need to do is uh remember that um that value so that when you go to the self check what is the mass of the wheel using cast iron material so choose the right answer and um, you should get the right answer if you drew the part correctly and then when you're done same thing you're gonna do a screenshot of the entire screen with your name on it with the drawing and with the mass property and then send that over to J at mdusd.net as proof and then the document's been saved close the document and you should have three drawings done at this